In the spring of 1963, a group of Arab tribesmen led by Musallam bin Nafal al kathiri began attacking facilities of American oil companies stationed in the Dhofar region of Oman. Musallam bin Nafal, who was the leader of the al kathiri tribe, objected to the presence of American oil companies in his tribal territory. He refused to allow Americans to exploit and profit from Oman's natural resources while the Omanis lived in poverty. His attacks on American vehicles and engineers triggered what is known as the Dhofar Revolution, which managed to overthrow the corrupt Omani king known as Sultan Sayyid bin Taymur. During the reign of Sultan Sayyid bin Taymur, Oman was underdeveloped, poor, and filled with famine and disease. The majority of Omanis lived in poverty, while the monarchy and the elite lived lavish lives and granted concessions to British and American oil companies. None of the massive oil wealth of Oman was filtered down to the population. The tribes of the oil-rich region of Western Oman were particularly marginalized and lived in extremely harsh conditions without government support. Therefore, a dissatisfaction with the Sultan's policies provoked an uprising of several local Arab tribal leaders led by Musallam ibn Nafal. When the Sultan allowed the American Mekong Oil Company to operate in an oil-rich oasis in the territory of the Kathiri tribe, Musallam bin Nafal and his supporters attacked American petroleum engineers and company vehicles and managed to seize control of the oil facilities. However, after the Omani government sent troops into the region, he was forced to cross the border and flee to Saudi Arabia. Musallam bin Nafal appealed to the Saudi government for help and the Saudis agreed to help him in his revolution against the Omani government. With Saudi and Iraqi support, Musallam bin Nafal managed to train his army of hundreds of fighters to use modern weapons and to wage guerrilla warfare against the Omani army. His army was known as the Dhofar Liberation Front and it aimed to overthrow the Omani king. After a couple of years of military training, Musallam bin Nafal and his group began to plan a series of surprise attacks against the Omani government in Dhofar. Musallam bin Nafal and his army entered Dhofar through the Rubb al Khali desert of Saudi Arabia. After entering Dhofar in 1965, Musallam bin Nafal initiated his guerrilla war against the Sultan. He and his tribal force began a war against the government in the mountains of Oman and inflicted huge losses on the government forces and British and American troops sent to help the Sultan. More and more tribes began to join the rebellion. By 1968, thousands of rebels had joined the fight against the central government and by this time the rebels were split into two groups. By this time, the Soviet Union began to take advantage of the instability in Oman and began to fund communist rebel groups in order to serve Soviet interests and to establish a communist government in Oman. However, Musallam bin Nafal, who was the original leader of the Dhofar rebellion, distanced himself from the communist group. He rejected the Soviet-backed rebels as the Soviets wanted to exploit Oman for their own benefit and were going to cause unnecessary violence by extending the conflict. On the other hand, Musallam bin Nafal was just a tribal leader that wanted to restore the basic rights of the tribes of Dhofar. 
Musallam bin Nafal led the Kathiri tribe in a revolt against the communist rebels and kicked them out of his tribal territory. In 1970, a military coup led by Sultan Qaboos managed to overthrow Sultan Sayyid bin Taymur. Sultan Qaboos immediately made widespread reforms such as the use of oil revenues for the building of roads, investment in education, infrastructure and technology. Within a few years, Sultan Qaboos managed to transform Oman from a backward, isolated state into a modern country and he managed to improve the living conditions of the previously impoverished population. Musallam bin Nafal welcomed the new leadership and stopped fighting the government as he felt that the purpose of his revolution was achieved. However, Communist rebels kept fighting the government for a few more years until they were finally forced to flee Oman. After Sultan Sayyid bin Taymur was overthrown, Musallam bin Nafal went back to his village in Dhofar and lived a simple life. Despite being offered prestigious government positions by Sultan Qaboos, he refused any ministerial position and he lived the rest of his life in Dhofar as an ordinary citizen until his death. Musallam bin Nafal died on 7th July 2013.